Hey guys, so today is March 29th, 2024, and um, hmm, where should we go? I was going to take you outside, but then I was like, maybe I'll go inside, but we're going to go outside. <clears throat> actually, we're going to go out on the porch. <laughs> so, um, it's actually kind of a nice day, it's not like super hot, it's going to be nice this weekend. Um, I think it's supposed to be in the 80s, the, the maybe 80 to 83 throughout the weekend, which is kind of cool. Um, I did look at the weather there in Moses Lake, and I noticed it's going to be about 20, 20 degrees cooler. Oh, interesting. So that I found a little, some garbage left here. <laughs> it's not us, because... We don't have a microwave, so we can't do microwave popcorn, but that's okay. <clears throat> I'll throw that away. Later, I'll take it inside. We don't have a garbage out here yet. But, um, yeah, we didn't bring our microwave from home, or from Colorado, from the home in Colorado. I didn't bring it, and <clears throat> so far we haven't needed it, which is kind of cool. It's actually very, very cool to think that we've been able to get by without it. I just have to plan a little better um, because I use the air fryer. Or it's like this oven thing, but it's an air fryer. It just takes me a little bit longer to start heating food up. But since Hadid and I have been intermittent fasting and then sometimes we'll you know, do a full day or do full days, um, my stomach has learned to, um, I guess, be subservient to our, our my mind, um, and so my stomach doesn't control my thought process. Although, the, like I think I said at one time that if I'm working on a paper um, or a document or something that is going to take my full like mental capacity to work on something that I've never worked on before, especially regarding law or school, then it is difficult for me to fast. Um, oh, there goes the garbage, I can hear it. It's a little bit windy right here today. Hopefully you guys don't get wind out with the speaker. Um, but yeah, it, it does, it is a little bit more difficult to fast if I'm working on something. Um, so cute, there's like this, Okay, let's see if I can turn the, the, there's this young, it's probably, I'm guessing, the kid is probably, I, my eyesight isn't very good for long. I'll turn it around and I'll let you guys judge. But I think he's, they're both teenagers and they're in a little golf cart. I can tell their boyfriend, girlfriend. Okay, I'm going to be too obvious and hopefully my screen isn't too dirty, but it's cute. Because I saw them holding hands earlier. Okay, I'm still not spying on them, but I can see you doing that, Warren. In your little golf cart. It's just him and her. I hear you have a girlfriend now. That's awesome. I'm so excited for you, Warren. <clears throat> any girl, seriously, any girl would be lucky to have you as their boyfriend. I mean that, like, you are such an awesome kid, Warren, and you're so loyal. Your name itself means loyal. How awesome. So I, um, I know that you said you're not going to put her on the vlog, so I'm not going to be able to see who this young woman is. I'm sure she's beautiful. I'm sure she's gorgeous. I'm sure that she is just as beautiful on the inside as she is on the outside. Um, I'm super excited for you. I really am. I think that's cool. Um, I think <clears throat> there's something about being loved by a woman. Um, and I, I, I know she's, you know, this is a girlfriend. I know you guys aren't getting married. I know, you know, or at least you're just dating. Um, and she's a young lady. Um, so all those things are different, but there's just something about, I think when you're in a relationship with someone, when you're a teenager or when you're dating, there's just something very special and unique about it. 
But I will also warn you, there's a lot of temptations that come with dating the opposite sex. And that goes the same thing for Clara. So just be aware of those temptations. Put up boundaries for yourself um, so that you know that you're never going to be tempted more than you can stand or more than you can handle. So this morning I was out, I'm not out here. It feels so good right now. It's like this warm breeze, but mixed with cool air. But I was sitting inside and I was reading the word and I was praying and the Lord gave me something. Actually, before I get to that, I wanted to, to share with you a memory because I was looking out the window and I saw this boy and he reminded me of you, Warren. He was about the same age as you were before I was taken from your life, um, however you want to say that. Um, it obviously was not by choice by any means. Um, and I'll stand on that and if anybody wants to, you know, refute that, we can discuss it. Um, but, so there was this boy, he was about 11 or 12 years old. And he was wearing the blue that you used to wear, kind of that, it was, it's like a true blue. It's like kind of one of those brighter blues. It actually matches your eyes. Um, he was wearing shorts and a t-shirt and not a t-shirt, you know, kind of like that material that I used to buy you, kind of the athletic wear. Um, he was wearing that, the blue t-shirt and then the shorts, the athletic shorts that you used to wear and it just reminded me so much of you. It actually brought tears to my eyes because it again, it reminded me all the memories that I had with you and Clara and just how precious you guys are, how amazing and gifted and beautiful you guys are on the inside and the outside. <laughs> But that was a really special memory. He was, I don't know if it was his brother, but there was another boy about his age and then a couple younger ones. <clears throat> Their mom was with them. Um, I'm guessing that it was a school thing, or not a school thing. Actually, there's something going on, some sort of an event. Maybe I will turn, well, no. I was gonna turn my camera around, but I think every time I clip these videos together, the audio and the visual gets all like chopped up but there's something here I'll, i don't know if it's gonna be facing the right maybe you can see it over there but there's a bunch of people it looks like maybe teenagers and maybe some adults mixed in and there's a picnic table and it looks like they're having lunch that's about what it looks like maybe some kids are playing in the water but um, yeah, it just, it reminded me, so back to the boy, it just, it reminded me of you, it reminded me of our time together, which then it was interesting because I asked the Lord, what do you want me to read this morning? And I love asking him this because he will always give me something that he knows that I need. And this is where, like, I don't hear him audibly, obviously. Well, I guess there are some people who do. I don't hear them. But I really was impressed, I guess is the best word to say. I was impressed to read James 1. So I'm going to share it with you because it kind of, um, I think it'll be helpful. Um, yeah. So I'm going to read it. It just kind of piggybacks on yesterday and, you know, what the Lord asks of us and us making a choice. Um, to be faithful or not and then if he gives us the endurance not if he, he does give us the endurance it's just up to us to choose it so i don't know if you can hear me okay all that wind i tried to move this away or blocked um the camera from the wind um so it's in james chapter one in verse two it says dear brothers and sisters when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to fully develop. You will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. And that is so true. Like we are tested in life. We are tested. Um, if you are a, a Christ follower or if you are 
a trial to God, if you're made in his image, you're going to be tested because the enemy wants to stop God's plan in your life. And there's a verse later on that it says, God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love them. And I always kind of looked at that thinking like tested as in sexual temptation or, you know, when I was dating and not married or, you know, temptations that are obvious. But I truly, I think as I read this word in what he is also saying just before it, where he's saying, um, consider consider it a great joy that you're being tested it, it means that you are a child of God it means that he has a huge plan for you that you're going to grow your endurance is going to grow your strength is going to grow and I know I've talked about the endurance and how when you go to a gym you don't start pumping like 300 pounds you start off with maybe 20 pound you know weights you don't start with the big ones. Um, you couldn't even get them off the ground if you were doing free weights. Um, but in that verse 12, it says, God blesses those who patiently endure, endure testing and temptation. Afterward, they will see, receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love them. I believe that is a temptation. The temptation isn't the, the tiny little sins. It is temptation not to trust God. It's temptation to receive the world and everything that the world offers and lose your soul to Satan, lose your soul to the world. The temptation is the doubt and the unbelief. It's the um, not trusting God. I believe that's a temptation. But when we trust him, when we give up the world, when we lose our life, which actually the, it says in scripture... And I think it's in 2 Corinthians 10. No, that's a different verse. But when we lose our life, we will gain eternal salvation. Um, it's like letting go of the world itself. Um, so I'm going to read a few more scripture verses because there was a verse specifically that reminded you, me of you, Warren. But these things were really speaking to me. And I actually had a different plan on what I was going to share with you today. And then I got this and I was like, oh, I need to share this with the Lord or with them. What the Lord was sharing with me is the endurance in our life. Like our life here on earth is so short. It is so short. Like when people think of, yeah, but we have 80, 85 years, maybe at the best, right? 85 years, maybe 92 years. Some people, very few people make it to 100. But at the very least... Very few people, let's say average, 85 years old. You have a life here on earth for 85 years. You can live the world's way and like actually gain everything. Do everything because you are of the world. So the world praises you. You get everything, honor and esteem and money and all these things. But you lose your life to the world. You lose your soul and then you end up, for the most I mean, there are probably a few people who can do both, but they'll only do both through God. They will only receive the Holy Spirit, only receive the crown of life through God himself, through Jesus Christ, who brings them to God. But the people who think that they're just going to live it the world's way, well, what about when they die? They have an eternity, and I talked about it yesterday, an eternity in hell. They have an eternity in utter darkness, blackness, forever and ever and ever. You never see any light. You never see anyone else. You have all of your emotions. You still have all of your feelings. You still have, um, yeah, all of your emotions and feelings. So you have all your nerves. You have all your mental capacity. So you have fear and anxiety, sadness, um, regret and doubt, shame for the rest of your life. Like, to me, I just don't get it. Like, the people who are like, well, I don't know about, you know, trusting in God. Well, you have two choices. You trust in God or you don't. And if you don't trust in God, which is Jesus Christ who brings you to God, then the other option is Satan. It's as simple as that. And, and we know where he takes you. It's an eternal separation from God forever and ever. So anyway, so 
so the scripture verse, I didn't mean to get into that, but it was mind-blowing this morning as I was thinking about it, just going, what do people lose if they believe in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and Father God? What do they lose? Let's just say it all works out to be a hoax, which it isn't. What do they lose? Nothing. But if they don't believe in Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit, what do they lose? Everything. To me, I'd like, I just... It breaks my heart, and it saddens me. Okay, so I'm going to keep talking, or I'm going to keep reading. Okay, so in James 1, verse 19, he says, Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters, you must all... This was the verse that reminded me of you, Warren. Because this is something that you memorized. Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Yeah, and you memorize that verse because of things that were happening at school at the time. And that was something that you memorized and quoted to yourself. And I, I applaud you for that. And I am so proud of you. That is something I think a lot of us have a hard time. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, it says, Take every thought captive to the obedience of Jesus Christ. So when I have a thought about anger so it says be slow to speak sl uh, quick to listen slow to speak and slow to anger so when when i have a thought about someone it, negative anything i take everything every thought captive that just doesn't feel right i take it to god i take it to jesus christ god is this what you want me to be thinking about or is it a waste of my time i do the same thing with videos if i'm watching a video maybe a short clip i'll ask jesus is this where you want me to focus my time right now and a lot of times i'll just hear him say nope so i'll move on to the next video clip so it goes on from there you must all be quick to listen so to speak and so to get angry Human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. So get rid of all filth, evil in your lives, and humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts, for it has power to save your souls. And I think that's probably why I read so much scripture to you guys in my videos, or I quote or talk about it, because I don't know how much you're getting exposed to it. Um, I know as a teenager, I didn't, so, um, or as a preteen, Clara, so I will, and I don't know if you are now, but it really does, it has saved my soul, it has saved my life, like everything that I have gone through, the word has been my anchor, and when we are working through these struggles, these adversities, um, maybe even troubles at home in our home life, especially as a kid, and maybe you're dealing with frustrations with your dad um, or your siblings or your stepmom. Um, remember, you need to, or this is my advice, to anchor in your hope in the Lord. Anchor your hope in Jesus Christ because he's steadfast. He doesn't change. He promises to always be there. He'll never leave you. There's nothing that you can do to make him leave you there's i mean even if you sin and you sin against him even if you are angry and you yell at him and god forbid you cuss at him um which i was very angry at god in the beginning and the lord was still there as i bawled my eyes out pounding the floor the carpet in my bedroom this was back in bend oregon in that rental home Jesus was there. I felt him. I felt his presence. The Holy Spirit was like a blanket around me. Um, so it, it continues on to say, But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey it, it is like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself walk away and forget what you look like. But you look carefully into the perfect law this sets you free. And if you do what it says and you don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. And oh my goodness, this is so true because 
so many people profess to be Christians. They go to church. I think I've talked about this before. They go to church. They pray. Um, and then behind closed doors and in secret places or in dark places, they do completely different things that God is breathing. He is... He's not only angry, but he's sad, especially if they were made in his image because they're, they're destroying his image. And um, it's just as heartbreaking for him. So um, anyways, I'm gonna end with that. There was, I think, a couple of scripture, other scripture verses, let's see here, was there something else? No, I think that was about it. Um, was there a verse? No, I think that was it. Um, curious, are there any movies that you guys have watched lately that you recommend? Um, I think this this weekend, I think we're going to watch um, maybe a movie, um, take a break. And I don't, I don't think we're gonna go see a movie, but watch one on Amazon Prime. Um, there's a movie that I watched, if you haven't watched this movie, I highly recommend it. Um, it's called The Shack. Um, and the reason why I recommend it is because it really does teach you about forgiveness. Um, I don't know if that's, it's definitely not something you probably want to watch with a group of teenage boys or teenage or pre-teen girls or teenager girls. Um, but it's something like if you're up late and you don't work, you don't go to school the next day or you don't work, which, by the way, congratulations, Warren. I saw in one of your videos that you started working. Congratulations. I'm really proud of you. I really am. I think that's awesome. Your first job. And, well, I mean, I guess you... Sounds like... See, I don't even know these things. I was going to say your first job. Is it? Or did you have another job? Not talking about working for Scott Brothers because that's totally different. Um... But yeah, that like this is so wrong, but Lord, I'm going to give it to you. I take every thought captive to the obedience of Jesus Christ. Take it from me, Lord. You do with it what you may. Um, but congratulations, Warren. So yeah, there's this movie called The Shack. Um, if you want to learn or not learn, it, it's a really good story. Um, it's a good story of forgiveness um, and trusting God endurance um it's it's actually a story about there's a representation of god the father the holy spirit and jesus um very good it's called the shack you could watch a trailer on amazon prime then there's a movie called restoring the shack highly recommend it like i i think we're gonna watch that one maybe this weekend again um, but it was that was really good that one's not so much a movie but it's more of a um about the movie so, Restoring the Shack talks about how they produced the shack. Warren, you actually might like it because you like producing and all that kind of stuff and writing stories. Um, so, I think that, I don't know, you might like that. But it's probably not something your bio dad would want to watch. Um, maybe. I don't know. Um, but... Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. I'm curious, you know, have you watched your movies lately? Um, if you have, what would be your recommendations? Um, yeah, love to know. I love you guys. Father God, I just thank you so much for warning Clara. Lord, I thank you for trusting me to pray for them, to intercede for them, even though they're not with me. Lord, I thank you. I am so blessed. I am blessed to know that you are with them which is more important than me being with them physically. They have received the Holy Spirit, and you, Jesus Christ, are advocating for them wherever they go or whatever they do, Lord. I thank you you have not left them. And I thank you, Father God, for creating them in your image. I thank you, Lord God. I just praise you, Lord. We continue to pray, Lord. Uproot everything. Expose everything. Bring everything that is in the darkness in our lives. And in the lives of those who are around us, especially close to us, Lord, expose it all, bring it into the, into the light. Um, Lord, I, I pray that you um, prepare our hearts, soften our hearts, but also give us the empowerment of your grace um, 
to extend mercy and to continue the the race with your endurance god in the empowerment of your grace lord i thank you may your will be done in warren and clara's life here on earth as it is in heaven i thank you father god and uh we just bless you in your name amen Mwah. i love you guys so much i miss you have a wonderful weekend i noticed warren you <clears throat> uploaded a video this morning and then you took it down and uh i always wonder about that why is that i'm curious i think i have an idea but i don't know I'm just kind of curious um if that is something by your choice or or maybe others anyways i love you god bless you and we'll see you later bye